Hey y'all, it's your girl, Dr. D, Dr. Dion Arsenault. I am the pastor of Extraordinary Sisters PM Bible Study. I want to introduce you to a phenomenal woman of God. She is going to bless your socks off. She has a word right from the Lord just for you. Watch now. Oh, you better put your seatbelt on, honey. And if you want prayer after Bible study, call 480-937-2330. Watch now. So, Holy Ghost, we just we just receive that you're writing this word on our hearts and on our minds that it's alive and living for us today. And so um, I was thinking about a designer and we love designers. Designers are inspired to create the most wonderful things that a, a designer uh, is innovative. They, in their heart, they, they have pictures and images and, and things that need to be created. And we wait for what they're bringing to us because we love it, especially women. We, we love all the clothes and the beautiful purses and the shoes that they present to us. Men love all the uh, innovative, innovative things that happen in, in new cars and in airplanes and um, all the technology that's being created. I'm just saying that designers, they pique our imagination. They inspire us and we are grateful for that gift. And did you know that the Lord made you a designer? He handed you a paintbrush. I have two of them here, a small one or a big one. And he handed you his promise book that every everything that's in this book is in the kingdom. And it's for you. It has your name on it. He made you the designer. Paintbrush and promise book. And this thing about the promise book is that uh, it comes with instructions. The instruction is that it's voice activated, that it has to be spoken out, that when you speak it, oh, you release the creativity that's attached to it. And it wasn't meant to stay in the book that it wasn't meant to stay on the pages. It was meant for you to create the most amazing life you could ever imagine with that word. So I want to go back to the beginning where God said uh, he created the heavens and the earth. In Genesis 1, the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Holy Ghost was hovering. He wasn't doing anything. He was just waiting. But when God said, let there be light, oh, I just imagine this big boom happened. I imagine everything got shaken up and light certainly was formed. And in fact, Jesus said that he was the light of the world. And so Jesus stepped out of the Father the Holy Ghost empowered the Word of God on the earth. And so um, I saw that John had seen all this. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And it says that... Um, that, let me see, nothing was made except it was made by him. Through him, all things were made, the word of God on the earth. And without him, nothing was made that had been made. So when he said, let there be light, the universe was formed at God's command so that what was seen was not created out of the visible. And I'm telling you these things 
because he called you to be a designer. Ah, oh, you can be this kind of a designer that that creates on canvas, but you can be oh, this kind of a designer that sweeps sweeps through the unknown with all the possibilities of God for you in this book. So uh, one day I was imagining that uh, the Holy Ghost took me into outer space and set me on a stool, and he said, look, look at all this. He said, the sun, the moon, the stars, stars are even named. He said, the galaxies and the planets and all of this, he said. It was all created by a spoken word. It, was, it came out of the mouth of God and was formed. And then another time, uh, I imagined that he was taking me to another place. I don't know if we sat or if we stood. Anyway, it was dark. It was motionless. There was no vegetation. There were no people there. And uh, I just waited. I was waiting for the Holy Ghost to say something. But he didn't. And then I got it. He said, this is a blank canvas. This is for you to create on. There's nothing here, but it's waiting for your voice and your promises to come forth. So when I teach intercessors, I was hired as the intercessor for the church. When I teach them, I teach about this. I always say that when you wake up in the morning, your day is formless and void, and there's darkness over it, unless you get up late. But the Holy Ghost is there with you. You've never lived this day before. You don't know what this day holds, but you're the designer. You can create exactly what you desire out of the promises of God out of his promises. So he shows us how to create. He formed the earth out of his word. So I needed a house. Uh, we had been renting for a long time, and I'm a gardener. Not vegetable gardens, but, but plants and trees and bushes, and I love to work in the yard. Uh, that's part of my exercise routine. And I like to watch the flowers grow. So when we were in a rental, I couldn't do that. But here's the thing. I'm an intercessor. And uh, people, some people have not heard that term before. So I just wanted to quickly share a few things about an intercessor. Um, she reminds God of promises that are yet to be fulfilled. She... Uh, she builds up a hedge of protection around people that need protection. She fights for those that, that are experiencing injustice. And she stands in the gap for those that don't know how to pray yet, but need God's assistance. So, so, uh, so I'm praying for the congregation, and I'm praying the blessings over them. Um, I have this wonderful little book that's just filled with the promises of God um, in a, a form that's just easy to, to use. And uh, so I'm praying blessings over the congregation, and I found the scripture in Deuteronomy 6, 10, and 11. God gives us land with large flourishing cities we did not build. He gives us houses filled with all kinds of good things we did not provide. Wells we did not dig, vineyards and olive groves we did not plant. He gives us lands and houses and fields and vineyards. Oh my goodness, I just wanted a house. But I knew that when he gives us land um, with large flourishing cities, that Dr. Maureen says he's talking about businesses. And I think he's talking about shopping centers. I think he's talking about Marshalls and TJ Maxx and, 
and um, all those amazing stars. But anyway, I found the scripture, the scripture for my house. And so I would walk my neighborhood, and I would confess the word over the congregation, but over me too. And one day, my husband woke up, and he said, uh, you know, this is what the Lord said to me. He said, get up and go get Mary a house today. I love that. So anyway, he got up, he got dressed, he started driving around the neighborhood, and he saw a man putting a sign out on his yard. So he stopped, asked him if his house was going to be up for sale. And the man said, yes. He said, we want to move back east to be with our children, and so we're selling our house. And so he asked him if he wanted to see the house and gave Fred the tour of everything. And then Fred called me and said, I think we're going to buy this house. When you come home from work today, we're going to look at it. And we did. And it was a house with, with all kinds of good things we did not, excuse me, provide that, that it had everything my heart desired. It had this wonderful fireplace. It had a brand new uh, refrigerator and washer and dryer. It had two microwaves. It had uh, um, an evaporative cooler and an uh, air conditioner. Anyway, it had all the things my heart desired along with the fruit trees. So I got my yard. One day, a lady was uh, sharing with me her, uh, her spiritual um, times with the Lord every morning. She, her daily confessions consisted of health, healing, prosperity, safety, and protection. And so uh, she gave me a copy of them. And of course, I made them my own. I had to have those not only for me, but for the congregation. We had to have health, healing, prosperity, safety, and protection, and the whole body of Christ. And so, as I would pray these scriptures with, with, uh, with the reference to uh, the promise book, uh, a peace would come over me. And I said to the Lord, what is that? And he told me in Isaiah, 4, verse 5 in the Amplified, he said, And the Lord will create over the whole site and over the dwelling places and the whole assembly a cloud and smoke by day and a pillar of blazing fire by night. He said, Over all of these promises is a canopy. It's a defense. He said, it's his divine love and protection. So as I'm praying, health and healing, prosperity, safety and protection, God's building a canopy over all the people and over me and my family. And we are receiving his defense, his divine love and protection. Protection is really important to me. I, um, when my husband got sick, uh, I would call my son in Flagstaff and his wife, and I would ask them, is there any way Tom could come down for a few days? And I, Bridget, his wife, was so gracious. She always held down the fort so that Tom could come and be with me and his dad. And he, I would come home from work, and they would be laughing, and they would be singing, and Tom would put this big bowl of food in front of him, and he would say, I'm not hungry, and then he would proceed to eat every single thing on his plate. Ah, oh, it was wonderful when Tom came. Well, he could only stay for a few days. It's time for him to go back home. And he was driving to Flagstaff, so he would leave very early in the morning because of the traffic. He didn't want to get into the, the traffic of people going to work. 
There's hardly any today, is there? Anyway, um, he said he was going around a mountain road, and right in the middle of the road was a deer. He said he missed it by inches. You know, in Psalm 37, 28, it says, they will be protected forever. Psalm 37, 28, they are protected forever. So I never worry. I, I know that God's got them. Angels are guarding them, and we have his divine protection. When I began to pray the blessings years and years ago, when I was a new intercessor, I, I, I looked around when I was praying the blessings. I thought, can anybody see what's in my heart? In my heart, there was this argument going on. It's praying blessings over the congregation. But in my heart, it was saying, no, you're disqualified. You see, I grew up in a denomination in religion. And religion said, oh, you have to earn your, the goodness of God. You have to work for it. He doesn't just give it out freely. But that's not the truth. The truth is that Jesus fulfilled every righteous requirement of the law. And then when he went to the cross, he took every one of my sins and every penalty so that now God is free to give me his word, his promise book, and the brush so that I can create everything that I am dreaming about in my world, in my world. And so he made you a designer. He gave you the ability to create. He gave you his book. And he gave you his brush. But I brought a big one for you. So you could get started right away. Blessing. I just received blessings overtaking you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>